In the Bosnian city of Lagos, two powerful families, the Okoyes and the Ademolas, had a long-standing feud. Their hatred for each other was so strong that even the mention of the other's family's name could start a fight. Against this backdrop of hatred and violence, two young lovers, Romeo Okoye and Juliet Ademola, fell deeply in love. Romeo, a handsome and charming young man, met Juliet, a beautiful and kind-hearted young woman, at a party in Victoria, Iceland. Their love blossomed, but they knew that their families would never approve. So they kept their relationship a secret, exchanging sweet messages and stone glances whenever they could. One fateful night, Romeo snuck into Juliet's house in Enkeja, and they decided to get married in secret. They exchanged vow in a quiet ceremony, hoping that their love would one day bring peace between their families. But fate had other plans. When Romeo killed Juliet's cousin, Femi, in a fight, the Ademolas vowed to take revenge. Juliet's parents arranged for her to marry another man, Chief Balogun's son, Tunde. Juliet was devastated. She begged her parents to change their minds, but they refused. In desperation, she turned to a wise old man, Babatunde, who lived in the slums of Mushin, Please, Baba Tunde, help me, Juliet begged. I do not want to marry Tunde. I love Romeo. Baba Tunde looked at Juliet with kind eyes. Don't worry, my child, I have a plan. Baba Tunde smiled and said, I have a special portion that will make you appear dead. Your family will think you have passed away and they will cancel the wedding plans. Juliet's eyes widened with hope. Really? That would be amazing. Babatunde nodded, but you must be careful. The portion will only last for a few days. You must find a way to be with Romeo before it wears off. Juliet thanked Babatunde and took the portion. She drank it and fell to the ground, pretending to be dead. Her family was devastated, thinking they had lost their beloved daughter. Meanwhile, Romeo was waiting anxiously for news from Juliet. He had heard about the wedding plans and was determined to stop it. When he heard that Juliet was dead, he was outbroken, but then he received a secret message from Babatunde, telling him that Juliet was alive and waiting for him. Romeo was overjoyed and made his way to Babatunde's house in motion. When he arrived, he found Juliet alive and where they hugged each other tightly. Tears of joy streaming down their faces, but their happiness was short-lived. They heard a knock on the door. It was Tunde, Chief Balogun's son, who had come to pay his respect to Juliet's dead body. Romeo and Juliet knew they had to hide. They snuck into a secret room in Baba Tunde's house, holding their breaths as Tunde entered. Tunde looked around the room, suspicious that something was amiss. Baba Tunde tried to distract him, offering him food and drink, but Tunde's eyes kept scanning the room. Romeo and Juliet heard their breaths hiding behind a curtain. They heard Tunde say, I do not believe Juliet is really dead. I think she is hiding something. Baba Tunde laughed. You are just grieving. My son, Juliet is gone and we must accept it. But Tunde was not confused. He stormed out of the house vowing to find out the truth. Romeo and Juliet let out a sigh of relief. They knew they had to leave Lagos to escape the danger that Tunde posed. They packed a small bag and said goodbye to Papa Tunde. As they made their way to the bus station, they were stopped by a group of rough-looking men. Where do you think you are going? One of them snarled. Romeo stood tall, ready to defend Juliet. But then he saw the men's leader. Femi's brother, Wally, you are the one who killed my brother, Wally snapped, his eyes blazing with anger. Romeo knew he was in trouble. He tried to explain, but Wally wouldn't listen. Wally eyes flashed with anger. You think you can just kill my brother and run away? You must pay for what you did. 
Romeo tried to reason with Wale, but he was too angry to listen. Just as Wale was about to attack, a car screeched to a halt beside them. It was Juliet cousin, Neoma. Wale stopped. Don't hurt him, she cried. Wale turned to Neoma. Surprised, why are you defending him? He killed your cousin too. Neoma took a deep breath. I know, but Juliet loves him. And I love Juliet. We can't let you hurt him. Wale snorted. You are just a foolish gay. You do not know what is good for you. But Neoma stood firm. I am not afraid of you, Wale, and I won't let you hurt Romeo. Wale sneered, but he backed down. Fine, but this is not over. You won. Romeo and Juliet breathed a sigh of relief as Neoma drove them away from danger. But they knew they couldn't stay in Lagos. They had to find a way to escape to a safer place. Neoma drove them to the airport where they boarded a flight to Abuja. They knew they had to start a new life, away from the Fuedin families. In Abuja, they found peace and happiness. They built a new life together, free from the hatred and violence of their families. But their happiness was short-lived. One day, they received news that their families had finally made peace. After realizing the senselessness of their feud, Romeo and Juliet were overjoyed, but also saddened by the fact that they had to leave their families behind. They realized that their love had conquered all, but at a great cost. As they looked into each other's eyes, they knew that their love would last forever. They also knew that they had learned a valuable lesson. Love conquer all, but forgiveness and understanding are the keys to true peace. And so Romeo and Juliet lived happily ever after. Surrounded by the love and acceptance of their new community, hate and violence only lead to destruction, while love, forgiveness, and understanding bring peace and happiness. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel to support us. Like, comment, and share. And please do not forget to tell us the country or state you are watching from. Thank you. We love you all.